Hi, I'm Jenna from Timber Creek Lodge, and you're listening to Bring Me Your Torch with Jesse Anyling. Welcome to another episode of Bring Me Your Torch. I'm Jesse. And I'm Elaine. And Elaine, how are you doing? I know you had a little food poisoning earlier today. You, you fighting through it? It's been, you know, 24 hours of hell. And what kind of garbage are you putting in your lot. face? Well, you know, when you turn vegan, you eat a lot Ew. of raw food, and vegan. that's basically what happens. You get food poisoning. Well, go back to meat, you know. She don't eat meat, but she sure likes the bone. Well, you know, I do. It's, I'm like 80% vegan. That's disgusting. I, I'd be sick if I was eating that, too. It's, pl- no, it's plant-based, okay? And that's all it is. It's, mm. not, it's not just leaves and lettuce. It's, you know, real the fruits and vegetables or... and grains. Yeah. You, you saying you got a lot of nuts coming in your face? I sure do, buddy. <laughs> kind of well, like you. <laughs> no, I, I had a big week. My my brother and sister in law had a baby over the weekend. Congratulations! So I'm, I'm but an I uncle didn't now. ask. Yeah, but I, <laughs> little little Elliot. He, he uncle, was born actually uncle 30, Jesse. Uncle Jesse was born at 34 weeks. So he was a little early. Um, so I, I watched him. They have a live stream into the little area where they have him in the hospital. I think he's gonna be going home within a week or so. So things are looking good there. I, I, you, I can't believe you, who never sees movies, you saw a couple movies recently, huh? I did. I saw the big, big sick. That's I can't. Judd talk. Apatow movie, right? It is. And I saw Dunkirk, which I saw. We talked about a couple episodes ago. So did you like it? I loved it. Well, did you see it in IMAX? No, no, no. So you got to see it with like these, like that Dolby surrounds and the, where the gunshots literally make the, the room shake. Actually, mine did. I was all the way in the back because that's where the cool kids sit. Uh, and yes. I, I definitely felt like I was being shot at. I can definitely do without seeing that movie. <laughs> just because you don't like the violence and the war and stuff? No. And the, the big sick, it's, it's, that's Judd Apatow. Um, it's, uh, what's his name? Something, something. I, can't, I can never pronounce his name. He's on, um, he's on... Silicon Valley now. Yes. Yeah. He's, did you? Uh, was he? Did he do good you know, as a? Do, do well so as I, a? So I cried the whole time. Oh, I don't want to. Don't don't ruin it for me. I want to see it. So, but so was it like a dramedy? I mean, I know. So the, it was, and there was a there was a lot of comedy trickled throughout, but it's very very serious movie. It's based on a true story, and he's the main character. And it, it was his story, so I, th- I think he did a great job. So it's like when he finds a girl, they fall in love, then she goes into a coma, and then he has to like, hang around with uh, Ray, Ray Romano yeah, or something, but, her parents. I mean, yeah, I love Ray Romano, by the way. Um, Ray Romano here. Like, I get it. Like, I get the whole thing. Like, he's Pakistani, she's American, he doesn't want to tell his parents. But, like, it's more about them meeting and having that, like, instant connection the moment they meet. Interesting. And then kind of him always remembering how much he loves her. All in right. that moment. Well, I'm gonna. I'm definitely gonna watch. I cried it. the whole time. I didn't get a chance to see it when I was in theater. I mean, it was still in theaters, but I just like, things have been so crazy. There's so many movies. Um, so hopefully these things come to either video on demand or DVD sooner rather than later. I can watch. You're them. gonna cry because you're a big baby. I, I cry at everything. Yeah, I cry at Kleenex commercials, at Hallmark commercials. <laughs> um, I cry when I listen to this podcast, but I don't know if that's good or bad. <laughs> So let's talk to some of the shows that we watched this week. Uh, starting with the challenge, Dirty 30, XXX. So Corey and Brianna are nominated for elimination. Now, I barely remember who Brianna is. She's the one that came in, uh, and she got, she. got. I think she was on one previous season, and she was sent home because her partner quit to go with his girlfriend or something stupid. Oh, yeah. She yes. came in to take over for Smashly when Smashly had a meltdown and left. Uh, so I'm like, I have no real connection to her, but everybody's pissed off at Corey because he's, he's coming after the big dog. First of all, he's kind of, he comes off as a scumbag to me, but he's coming after the big dogs. He sent, or at least everybody thinks he sent home Darrell in the first episode and he kind of made it. Well, he did. Yeah. Well, he's, you know, they're in the little house there waiting to possibly come back. Um, but you know, everybody thinks he's going to come for CTs and to come for bananas and come for Derek, these kind of people. So they're like, you know what? Sorry, Corey. You, you, you thought you were one of the big dogs and you came for us, but it ain't going to happen. And everybody's pissed off at Camilla because she voted for Hunter, not Corey, because I don't know, they, they banged on the beach yeah, or they made out or they, more. they did something. I mean, you know, they had the thing last, last year. I don't know, but and that pissed off everybody off at Camilla. Camilla, I mean, She's been in le- recent seasons. I've been liking Camilla a little less and less. Maybe it's because she didn't come on our show two years ago. But was she, she supposed had, to? She should have had the chance. She could have been great. Yeah. So uh, yeah, it's gonna be interesting to see 
if that really – because, you know, yes, she has this whole thing with Bananas. They've been on the same team uh, for each seasons and seasons, but Bananas cuts everybody out, you know, in the blink of an eye, no problem there. That guy has no allegiance to anyone, does no, he? only to himself, as, as we've seen in, in many of the recent seasons. So Illuminations this year are going to be taking place in a place called the Pres- Presidio, which I had a Wikipedia to find out what the hell Presidio means. It says it's a fortified base established by the Spanish in areas under, under their control or influence. So they're Sounds really like going – yeah, they're really going for this whole Spanish theme between the the Spanish fort they were in earlier this season. Where were they? The Colombia, right? Is that yeah? Yeah, jungles so. of Colombia with the FARC. So this is how it all works at the Presidio. I'm, I'm probably going to end up calling it like the the arena or something by the end of this episode. Uh, the losing team has to pull uh, these random. They call them crosses. They're really X's, but they call them crosses because then they have something called the double cross. When you pull it out, and if there's two crosses on there, it means you're mm-hmm. safe. You're not going in, but so you don't have to, yeah, you don't have to pick the other person to go against the person previously to vote voted in. Um, it's it's a little. It, it's kind of like when they had to pull the was it the shrunken heads or whatever out of a bag. Yeah, they do this ago. every. <laughs> they do this every time though. Yeah. So so Dario got it, and so did Veronica. So you Dario. Like Dario? Um, I don't know. I, I didn't like him at first. Then I kind of liked him, and then I didn't I like, like him again. I like him a lot, actually. I, I, he, he looks like a poor man's Alex Rodriguez, if you ask me. <laughs> Which, I mean, I, I'd have, I, I, I would happily look like, I would happily look like a poor man's Alex Rodriguez. See, that's, <laughs> that's, that's still you're doing pretty, pretty well. Um, so he sends in Derek, not the Derek we know and love, but the Derek from Are You the One who is dating Tori? Who, by the way, I like Tori. I, I get rid of Derek. I want Tori to come over to my side. Uh, Tori's a cool chick. I think she's cute. Yeah, she's a str- strong competitor. Yeah, yeah, I'll see that too. And uh, Veronica wanted to forget the double crush of the women and threw in Brittany. I, I assume she's from Are You the One as well. You know, I don't know how Brittany is. These are the one people for the. Yeah, I, I guess the ones. How stick do you around not know to- them? You're the one that got me turned on to this show. Well, I like the are show, the but I don't. After the show ends, I don't remember who they are until oh. they do a couple of seasons on on the well, challenge. My, well, Mike, remember Mike? Mike, who's Mike? Oh yeah, yeah oh yeah, Mike. Oh, we, we, he, yeah, he was. On. I didn't recognize him for the one. I recognized him from the challenge. That I go, oh yeah, I kind of remember him going back now. See, or no, for, for the, the, the real world, the real world. Yeah, yeah. See, these shows are all coming together in my mind. I, I can't take it anymore. So, so they send in Derek and Brittany to face off against Corey and Bri- and Brianna. And the the Presidio, the challenge, is this thing where they have like these sticks shoved in walls with balls of fire on the other end or something, and they got to pull them out of the wall. And the first person to pull out all their sticks wins. Uh, Corey and Brittany win. Derek and Brianna go home or Ridley into exile, the house uh, where the remaining people are. Which, by the way, we didn't cover last week when there was like a huge fight between Tony's brother and and. One of the women, I can't remember who it was, but he ended up going home because he like, punched her in the face or something. It was crazy. Jeez, he hit a woman on national television? Well, it wasn't that. They didn't show it, and apparently she hit him first. I don't know. It was a whole thing. It was kind of strange the way they did it. But yeah, not a good look for uh, Shane Rains, Tony's brother. But... So in the challenge competition, they have two teams and basically one small little walkway or doorway to go through and you have to get rings from one side to the other and the way you get them is just by smashing into each other so you had two captains one was daria one was our girl kayla and you know i love kayla but kayla made a big big mistake if you what was that so if you can pick anybody from the challenge to be on your team when the challenge is smashing into people at full speed, who do you CT. pick? I, I, exactly. You pick CT. She did not pick CT. She picked Derek, which, you know, Derek's a beast. I understand it. But she went with a team that was lean and quick. Dario went with just these, like, ma- you know, these beast master yeah. guys. And, do do? Yeah, and, of course, they won. I mean, CT, they keep talking about him having a dad vibe. This dude can just destroy – like, Tony, like, jumped on CT's back, and CT just swatted him like a fly. He's a, yeah, but he's a monster. The whole dad bod thing's all the rage right now and people will use any excuse to use that term and he, and he has that bob. yeah and he has that dad power you know just destroying yeah. everybody so kayla you know we love you but god that you always pick ct first in these kind of things it's just it's just what you, you do you think she goes far 
this season? I don't know. She's been doing well. I mean, we don't know what's going to happen next episode with her, but she's been doing pretty well. She finished first for the women in the first episode. So, and she's, I told you, she's Jack. She's been doing a lot of workouts I've seen on, on her Twitter and other places. So she's in much better shape. I mean, she was in good shape to begin with, but she yeah. was like a good, she was good but, normal shape. Now yeah. she's like in good, like jacked shape. Yeah. I'm um, just wondering if based on everything she says on Twitter and Instagram, and kind of the timeline of when she went and when she came back, if it seems like, from your point of view, she went pretty far. Maybe. I, I haven't spoken to her as much as I did the last go around. So I have less of a, of a sense of, you know, where she's, where she's going. She's getting too famous. I tell you, don't be too famous for us, Kayla. You're our girl. So so next week we have uh, Jordan Bananas, Nelson, Derek, uh, you know, the Derek, uh, you know, we know and love, uh, Tony and Ammo, who used to be Chris, on, you know, who hated Kayla and apparently now they're friends. That'll be interesting if we can talk to her about that. Oh, good. They're up for the men. And then we have Camilla, Jenna, Kayla, Brittany, Jemmy, and Nicole are all potentially up for the women next week. So we'll have to wait and see uh, how that goes. I want to see Kayla go far, obviously. And obviously. Yeah. I want to have a champion on our team. We haven't on our podcast. We haven't had an, a winner of anything yet, have we? I don't think so. Yeah, once she gets that million, right? Now it's a million. Yeah, she, you know, well, it'll be split up, I'm sure. But yeah, she'll want us to. Uh, she'll want to get paid to come on here. Yeah, she's like, who are you again? <laughs> um, on to below deck. So, what is going on with Adam and Hannah? Like suddenly BFFs. They hated each other a couple episodes ago. And now they're just drunk and falling on top of each other. And I, I think Hannah would have banged it out with Adam, and Adam didn't want a part of it. Really? I don't I don't think at all that happened. He's like, I'm going to so, put her to bed, but I'm not going to bed her or go to so bed with her. Hannah is just a weird one because she'll fight with people and then she'll be friends with them and then she'll fight with them again. So I, I don't see her, though, coming back next season. I don't see them asking her to come back. Really? I mean, no. she's, she's one of the staples on... She's on, not like Kate, though. You don't think so, huh? No. Do you, think, do you see them bringing Bobby back? I don't. And actually, he's probably the one I see less coming back less because he doesn't have a storyline. What did he have this season? He's just a big goofy doofy who, I'm a, I'm a firefighter and I'm trying to bang chicks. I hope they right. bring back Captain Sandy, if anybody. And like Hannah kind of didn't have a storyline either, though, if you think about it. who She was fighting with random people, but... Well, she, she made out with the dude... Uh, you know, the guy from Texas, from she, Dallas. She did not make out with him. That she was, did there something. There was some fellatio going she, on yeah. there. there. There was mouth action. I don't know what part of the body the mouth was touching, whether the lips or other things, but <laughs> we get a sense that was happening. Um, yeah, well, I hope to bring back Captain Sandy. Um, well, speaking of fellatio, I don't, I don't know exactly what's going on, but Wiz and Malia finally said, screw it, and started making out. And then, you know, they, they didn't kick Bugsy out of the room, but, you know, Bugsy's like, I'm not going to be here while they're banging him above me. So I don't know if they banged it out or not, but there was definitely... You know, some heavy petting. <laughs> I'll say. Yeah, I I do think that Bugsy though, she's ready to burst. Yeah, Bugsy, you know, she was on our podcast a couple months ago. We love her, but she's been very emotional this season. Um, she called out Hannah, and I've seen her. She's gotten a lot of crap online. People are saying she? she's being a. Well, yeah, I guess it depends what site you go to. But you know, acting like she's a baby, and that you know they're not. She's not fair to Hannah. But you could see in her, hear in her voice how upset she was when she was talking to Hannah and said she didn't think she'd be a good chief stew. Her voice is kind of cracking. Um, you could tell she was not comfortable saying these things, and I really felt bad for her. I mean, I did too, but I just don't think it's really warranted to be that dramatic. But. There's no real reason that they're fighting. That's why another thing, I don't know if Bugsy would come back. Who who are the people who've caused the most drama? Well, the, the problem with Bugsy, the problem that Bugsy has, I will say, is that she was a chief stew and now she's not because she, you know, I, I wouldn't say she was demoted. She just took the spot that was open for the second stew to, to be on the show and be on the ship. And if you're the boss and, you know, being the chief stew is basically being the boss of the inside, uh, being the boss of below deck. Right. Um and suddenly you, you're not anymore. You have to follow someone's uh, rules. and so it, It's tough. That's a tough right, pill to I swallow. Right, but I can see her following Hannah's rules. But if she doesn't have a storyline, if they don't have some sort of drama surrounding them, then I don't see how they can come back on the next well, season. Like Bugsy's Malia, Malia they're probably a shoe in I mean, she's going to be hooking up with all the dudes on the ship. Bugsy's biggest issue on the show is that she has a boyfriend back home. So she's not like, you know, <laughs> she's not banging out with everybody else. I mean, everybody else is single and ready to mingle at the very least. She, and, and, you know, and she had the well, unfortunate. Well, Max too, though. Yeah, Max. And, yeah, and he, He'll never be back. Max is going to be back. I, I like Max. He seems like a very nice guy, but he has 
kind of a boring storyline. So I, I just don't, I don't see it happening. I know they're going to bring back the captain because they want to do something. Well, she was great, first of all, but captain. they want to be. Yeah, Captain Sandy. Captain Sandy. I should have to call her Captain Sandy Lee. <laughs> <laughs> like, what is, what do you, you said it to Bugsy. I'm like, what are you talking about, <laughs> Sandy Lee? They are bringing back Captain Lee, though, in the regular one. I mean, did you see the bizarre, uh, tra- it wasn't even a trailer, I guess it was a commercial for the main show coming back. No. It was so. It was during the show last night, it was so bizarre. What was it? Why was it bizarre? You, you have to watch it. Like it's it, it's Captain Lee just being. You, you have to watch it. I don't. I don't want to tell I you. I hope he's I more hands on this time. I feel uh, like Captain Sandy. Captain Sandy Lee. It's Captain Sandy. So, Captain Sandy Yawn, yeah, I think yeah. is her name. So they so they have this charity guest who apparently is a repeat. I kind of I kind of remember him kind of doing. Apparently he's obsessed with milkshakes, and I think it was insinuated that he like paid these girls to come on the ship with him. Because they don't really seem to be like too interested in him, do they? No, not at all. I mean, one of them matched with with Bobby on Tinder, and then this dude Jerry's like trying <laughs> to hook him up, help, trying to play wingman to him. And I, I can't tell if this girl like really liked Bobby or whether she was just, you know, like I was paid to bang someone this weekend. I guess I'll bang, I'll bang Bobby. Yeah, that's a good point. They Bobby is are. so not smooth, by the way. He's such a... He's just... You're right. He... I don't know. I, I, I was going to say, do any girls like Bobby? I mean, he seems like a relatively nice guy, but he's like this big, goofy dude. He's so just... great until he starts talking, and then it's like, <laughs> oh, just shut up. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I love, like, it's such... Such hypocrisy on the show that they all went on to to Hannah, as we previously mentioned, when she hooked up with one of the charter guests, and he's like in broad daylight on one of those skeety things, turning his hat backwards and making out with this chick who, you know, is I don't want to be mean, but you know, there's some fake parts to it. There's such there's a double wrong with standard, that. isn't there? Yeah. Well, even Max was like, all that stuff that we did to Hannah, I won't do to you. I'll give you a high five. I'm like, well, that's not fair. Wow. So the, the the show ended with uh, Adam showing the text to Wiz about how the night they were making out, she was also saying she wanted to bang with bang with him in the in the hotel at the end of the show. Do you think it ends with Mal- Malalia with Malia Malia <laughs> Jesus Molina? What's uh, Josh Molina? No, M- M- Melania. 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 Melania's gonna come on below deck. Uh, no, um, do you think it ends with? Malia not uh, having anybody, or do you think Wiz is like, screw it, I want to get some action. I'll just, I'll just look past the. I'm sure he'll get some action, and then it'll be over the moment they step off that ship. Yeah, until next, you know, next season they'll be like ex lovers, and he'll yeah. be obsessed with her, and she'll be like, I'm banging the new guy on the boat. Calm down. Or what if they come back next season and she's banging Adam, and now Wiz is the one that's freaking out and and, you know, and giving Adam's people wedges. Crazy. He seems like the kind of guy that would kill her and cut her whoa, up. Whoa, 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 whoa! That's as a podcast, we do not endorse that statement. <laughs> I don't endorse it, but it seems like he'd be like that. No, I think he's just you know. He's imagine if some somebody broke your heart, and then you had to be a, trapped on a ship with them. You know, it's breakup yeah, sucks. He was dating her for like two or three weeks before they actually stepped foot on that ship, and that was for some sort of training to, that yeah. they could even get on the ship. So it's not like he was like, yeah, we're gonna get married. Yeah, but he's probably like, oh, you know, I'm gonna be on this boat with this girl that likes me. We had a great couple of weeks. We get on yeah, this but boat. How- what are your expectations at that point when you've known somebody for two or three weeks? He probably, he probably thought he was going to bang her all charter season, <laughs> honestly. Well, life changes. Yeah, yeah. Then some good dudes name and Wiz show up and... Deal with it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm the big brother. So Cody came back into the house. Ramsey's went home last week. And the goal was funny. was to send that meatball Joe, uh, Josh home. Uh, it was, it was really Josh just a, is hilarious. It was really just a wasted HOH by Jessica last week. I mean, you, your HOH week and Ramsey's goes home. Are you, are you kidding me? I think they're all kind of a waste. Every HOH has been a waste. They well, haven't gotten kissing, any of the real targets out. They're all kissing Paul's butt so hard, except for Cody and Do you like Paul Jessica. overall? I mean... Well, so I'm anti-Cody and Jessica, so I'm on Team, so Paul, on team Paul, but once they're gone... I don't know where I may. I don't know where I may fall. It'd be kind of like the reset button. Um, I mean, Paul won HOH last week, and he nominated, of course, uh, Jessica and Cody. Um, but Jessica, had, she was pissed off that would that Paul won, and she mentioned that she won the halting hex, which just eliminates the week of. Uh, it's basically nobody goes home. There's no 
There's no ceremony. That is not what I thought it was going to be. Yeah, you I gotta, thought you that it watch only more worked on her. Nope, nope. So it's like it, it basically was safety. But she didn't want to be uh, nominated because then she could have used it next week. Next week was the last week she had the ability to use it. Um, Jason was also nominated. They, by her picking that temptation, the thing that was uh, unleashed upon the house is, wasn't really unleashed. It was just another competition where you can compete in it. If you win, you're safe and can't be put on the block. But if you lose, you're automatically You know, a Cody and person. Jessica were so stupid for not doing that. Because it was like a free veto competition for them. Yeah, but I don't think they could do it. I think, I think you know, people who were nominated, you're nominated. I think it's for everybody else. Because <laughs> they came in last, they couldn't be like a, on the block twice. <laughs> no, but if they had won it, and no, not it's, it's, last, it's it's not available to them. It's available to everybody else who's not nominated. Oh, well, yeah. I don't know if that's how it worked, but you know, it's how it's <laughs> so. So the entire house is basically against. Uh, Jody, as they're being called, Jessica and Cody, except for, <laughs> except for Mark, that muscle bound. I, I don't know. Mark I don't know what, looks like an overgrown baby. On he looks like Wreck It Ralph. Man. That's what they're saying. Wreck It Ralph. <laughs> Wreck It <laughs> Ralph. I need to Google this. Hold yeah, on. It's, it's, a, it's a movie. Um, and everybody in the house. So there's been a lot of people turning back and forth this season or this week because Paul and Christmas and a couple other of these people, Josh, have been really, really. <laughs> are you looking at Wreck It Ralph? <laughs> yes, okay. <laughs> Everybody, if you don't know what he looks like, Google Wreck-It Ralph. So everybody in the house, they've been trying to get uh, Cody to self-evict. You know, they've been basically calling him a liar that he didn't really – he wasn't really the Marines. Self-evict? You know, I guess the whole the Marine thing came up. self-evict? I don't know, people, if it just can't take anymore. If it's just, I mean, I guess if Jessica and Cody didn't have each other, it would be a very, very lonely week. Uh, but then Josh started freaking out at Mark – because uh, Mark was kind of talking a little kind of, I mean, Josh is always talking crap. Mark talked a little crap back, and then Josh started smashing pans together after he basically called him you know, a piece of crap for about 10 minutes. And then, it's on our Twitter page if yeah, you want Mark, to check it out. Mark freaked out. The sad part is, though, in the live feeds, when Mark goes to take it away from, from Josh, they cut to, to the fish. He didn't know what happened till last night when they're like, you know, opposite sides of the house, everybody, opposite sides Jeez, of the house. Jeez, it got ugly, didn't it? Yeah, I think they kind of made up, though, uh, on After Dark. I think they were, like, you know, doing yoga together or something. You, you can never be too sure that what you see on the show is the status quo at any given moment. So, uh, so tonight they actually uh, went to the eviction ceremony, and Jessica did use the halting hex. They had the voice come on and, and said some kind of like poem, you know, oh, anybody who uses the halting hex, the whole house will vex. Oh, and they, you know, <laughs> said, they said halting hex something like three times, and it was done. So uh, nobody was on the I did on not the see that coming. I seriously thought it could only save Jessica and not Cody. No, no so they saved them. So then you have what? Uh, how many people are left? Like 10 people or something? Yeah. You have like a 2 in 10 chance of, of them winning uh, HOH. Plus you never know where Mark or even Elena falls down these days. So the final uh, – or, the, or the, the head of household competition was – this fake graveyard, so there were heads, headstones in the middle of the backyard, and then you had to kind of hit a ball with a mallet and get it into different slots, uh, you know, for different numbers. Whoever had the highest number won. And getting spoiler closer alert. To the, yeah, spoiler alert. Well, you know, if you're listening to this, hopefully you've already watched the episode. If not, skip ahead like you know a minute. Um, uh, and going into towards the end, Christmas and uh, Cody were tied for 21. And then the meatball Josh came in with a 23 <laughs> and one. And I can only imagine that Josh is just going to belittle them and terrorize them all week. S somebody might get punched in the face. I think it's going to be very interesting. I mean, clearly we know what's going to happen. Yeah, it's I it's mean, such a it's so predictable now at this point that I'm not saying I'm not interested, but. It, it kind of loses its intrigue, you know, and, and everyone's going to be fighting and Cody's going to lose his mind. I don't really care about this week. Well, I just want to see one of them go home. The question will be when Jessica and Cody go home and there's no, I mean, maybe they turn to Mark next, but there's no big villain sitting there. Do they all still kiss uh, Paul's ass or do they actually start thinking maybe we get rid of Paul because yeah, we're giving him... At what him... point do you think they're going to start turning there's, on Paul? I don't know. There hasn't even been a discussion of it, which leads me to believe they're not very bright. I think um, he'll make it to Final Four at least. I mean, That's I think may prediction. maybe Alex will be the first person to think about getting rid of him. She seems to be a little more independent. Like, you know, Raven and... Uh, Alex? Kind of That's who... her ride or die. I love Alex, though. I don't know. I, she's she's my home girl. I don't know what to say. 
So, um, 90 Day Fiance again. It's it's a lot of the a lot of the same crap we've seen uh, in the last couple of weeks. We have Danielle and Muhammad, of course. Danielle's still trying mm-hmm. to get Muhammad deported. Spoiler alert: If you listened to our interview with her from a couple weeks ago, doesn't, doesn't happen. happen. Doesn't happen. Uh, I love that she went and met though with that. Remember that that weird guy Tom that Muhammad met in Walmart and they said having him <laughs> friends. Um, she's like to meet with him because she thinks somehow she's going to bring him over to her side, which. I mean, I don't know why you necessarily want Tom on your side, but she I don't see it happening anyways. Basically, Tom took Muhammad's side, and he just plays dumb. Like, she's like, look, look, look at Tom. Here's here's texts of him, like, banging some chick. And he's like, I don't know what those came, where those came from. He just doesn't want to believe well, maybe Muhammad's doesn't anything know. wrong. Maybe I mean, he yeah. doesn't really understand like, the severity of what Muhammad's doing in terms of the law. Well, I'm sure he's, he's watching the show. He's clearly breaking the law. I, I love that we, we learn lots about Danielle and Tom's individual sex habits. You know, Danielle's like freaking out, you know, that he's they have they only had sex like once three we three months after the wedding and and Tom's like, Well you CMI. think pe- you think people get married or have people get married and have sex every day and Danielle started screaming, Where's he getting the sex from? He's getting sex from somewhere <laughs> So at this point she clearly still cares about Muhammad, but when she came on our podcast she was over him. Yeah, you know, what's it's just interesting, it's when you get down to the nitty gritty, all these feelings come back and and she's just pissed that, you know, she may not want to sleep with him anymore, but if she knows that he was cheating on her, it's enough to what piss you off. What do you mean sleep with him anymore? She only slept with him once. Well, you know, that's once is better than none, I guess, right? Right? That, well, then Tom's like, you know, why don't you use this energy to take care of your daughters? And that pissed her off big time. Well, that's not rude or anything. No, no. I love how Tom's like, yeah, I haven't spoken to Muhammad in a long time, but I'm going to see him tomorrow. <laughs> what, a, what a coincidence <laughs> For, that's yeah, happening. Yeah, filming. Yeah. And Muhammad's lawyer even thinks Muhammad's an idiot, that Muhammad really has no plan um, going into this hearing well, he's with He's clearly Danielle. not an idiot because, as we know, he doesn't get deported, and she files for divorce, not an annulment. Yeah, it's it'd be interesting to see, especially with the, this week with all the immigration stuff going on. I'm sure that everybody on the show is very interested in it. I don't know. We'll have to wait just, and see. Yeah, then they have uh, George and Anfisa. You know, they're separated. But it's Anfisa train wreck. Them out. Yeah, I love Anfisa calls her grandmother. Her grandmother just makes Anfisa look fat, which is. Thanks, Grandma. Um, does, does now grandma, we know why she's so messed up. Yeah, does Grandma know what a nut, nut bar her granddaughter is? Oh, that's the real well, question. she created her. She's telling her she's fat? Come on now. Well, it could just be like, you know, guilt. We don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think the grandmother's, you know, it's one of those things where the grandmother says it and she doesn't know she's being hurtful, but sometimes it's taken hurtful. I don't know. Um, I, have to, I have to be honest, Elaine. Please you do. Know, they say don't judge a book by its cover. Um, I did judge George's friend when he met a guy with full neck tattoos and stuff. <laughs> and I'm like, what's going on here? These guys don't look like they look like oil and water. They don't mix. He's probably touchy dude... feely. He's a sweetheart. He yeah. cries at movies. <laughs> this guy Ramon, I actually liked him. I think he was being friendly, though. George says he hasn't hung out and had a beer with a friend in like two years. That's not healthy, two man. Years. And Fisa's is nuts. He hasn't known her for two years, though. Well, I don't know why. They've been on for about a year, and there's probably time before they actually film. Yeah, I, I bet you she's been in America for a year and a half, two years. Oh, now she can file for divorce because you have to be married for two years. Well, I don't know if they've been married for two years. They've probably been together for like two years and married for a year. I don't know. I'm sure that's information we could find if we actually you know, did research for the podcast. <laughs> Uh, by the way, we I, don't. Want, yeah, I want to yell at TLC because she was talking and she said they had she was talking to a doctor about plastic surgery and stuff and they had um, subtitles and then they started running like banner ads at the bottom of the TV for their new show uh, before the 90 days. And I'm like, well, I can't see. It reminds me of like when I was watching Lost and the ABC was was doing promos for some new show, but they had the uh, Jin and Sun on, on there and they speak in Korean and their subtitles. I'm like, I don't know what's happening. Because these marketing idiots screwed it all up. That's really frustrating. Yeah, it pissed me off. And then, of course, the other couple that we cover, we, we ignore half the couples on the show. We uh, do. Are, are Pow and Russ. And it starts off you don't, with Pow you don't give a shit about Pow, do you? I don't think she's very nice. Uh, she's basically emasculating Russ to the camera. So in Colombia, a man would find money, whether it is sell like empanadas or something. Um, by the way, she's blowing their money in a pipe dream of becoming... 
it's this never model, gonna happen. It, it's not gonna happen. It's just it's just not gonna <laughs> happen. Russ has given and she's very she's very pretty. She's like normal pretty. You wouldn't but, you kick know, her out of bed, right? No, but you know, my, it's not like modeling is really pretty doesn't work in modeling. You gotta be like nuts. You have to have a certain look. I just don't think she you has have to have it. nuts or be nuts. <laughs> be nuts. I mean, she has <laughs> generic South American pretty girl look. Yeah, but she's not which, that she doesn't have yeah, that exotic is, look that it's, stands it's, out. No. Well, I mean, she, I think she's she's very pretty, but I think when it comes to people who are pretty from South America, she's kind of like a dime a dozen when it comes to that. I don't know. I feel I don't mean that as negative as it probably sounds. Um, but you know, he moved Russ moved from Oklahoma, had to get a job that was outside of his industry as a, as a field engineer. It's a step down. It's like half as much money. He's making all these concessions. And Pau's like, well, you know, I came to America. I came to Miami for the good of our relationship. No, she didn't. She came because she wanted to come, and she didn't care whether you know, when she came to America, she knew Russ lived in Oklahoma. And now she's making him move because she doesn't like it and wants to go where she feels more comfortable. But it and is I Oklahoma. I mean, she could move anywhere but o and not live in Oklahoma. It's the pits. Have you been to Oklahoma? I, I have not been to Oklahoma. So I Sorry, I can't say. You know, I'll admit, to me, those are flyover states. Exactly. Don't, don't say mean thing to us if you live in Oklahoma. I have nothing against your, your uh, city or your respect, state. I would never just, live in Oklahoma. Well, you know. I, there's nothing wrong with Oklahoma. I, I think it's just probably lovely out there. What do you What do you know that's come out of Oklahoma? Um, was Oklahoma City bombing? <laughs> um, no, seriously. That's exactly um, what I was going to say. Timothy McVeigh, uh, right? Oklahoma, Oklahoma. Are, they, are those the Sooners? Oklahoma. I don't know. All Sooners. I know is the bombing. Yeah, I'm sure there's plenty of good stuff. I mean, <laughs> how it goes. So I love how Pow goes to get her picture taken by a dude named Mike Orangutan. <laughs> what is going on? What is, I don't even know what's happening. TLC just keeps getting worse and worse with this stuff. Well, it's a spinoff. Hey, it's the orangutan and his wife, and they're going to have <laughs> a, a new t TV show, I'm sure. Um, so the final thing I want to talk about, I'm sure you haven't watched it. Um, it. It aired on Monday, and I actually think I want to watch it again. So it's a new show on MTV called Siesta Key. We mentioned it briefly a couple episodes ago. Um, it's a bunch of rich kids in Sarasota who's, you know, rich parents oh, yes. are too busy, like running around trying to be cool than being actual parents. I mean, one of the dude's fathers actually funded the pilot and sent it to HBO. That's pretty awesome. But yeah. I'm wondering for you, at what age do you stop watching MTV shows? <laughs> because well, when it comes to the challenge, never. No, the challenge is fine because we grew up with those people that are still on it. But um, things like, are you the one? Are we still watching this when we're like 40, 50 years old? I mean, there was a time where I'm like, wow, will I ever be old enough to go in the real world? And now it's like, wow, I'm like 15 years too old to be on the real world. Yeah, you can do Big Brother. Um, yeah, so so the show Siesta Key is basically like Laguna Beach. Did you, did you watch that back in the day? Oh, it was yes. the, the yeah. precursor to the hills. Um, yeah, it, it was – I don't want to say it's more real, but it's, um, it's like the – well, here for at least they're all twenty one that can drink here. But there's like one woman who's a narrator, kind of like how Elsie was. Yeah. Um, in, Lauren in, Conrad. In, they Lauren Conrad, and just like how Lauren Conrad and Kristen Cavallari were fighting over the dude Stephen in the Siesta Key. There's a the main chick is named Juliet, and there's another girl named Madison. And they're both trying to vie for this guy Alex. He's the one with the father who who paid for all of this stuff. And there's already controversy. So this guy Alex. Um, apparently is friends with kids who tied a shark to their boat and then dragged it around, ripping it to pieces and killed it. I mean, you know, I'm not one for animal cruelty, but, you know, sharks eat people. I hate sharks. They're my enemy. Maybe he did it because it was Shark Week. Maybe. But, um, you know, PETA and animal rights groups freaked out at this. Of course um, they did. Yeah, and there were death threats to, to Alex and his friends and stuff. So they had to cancel the premiere party. So uh, you know, that's that's one strike against the show, I guess. But first world would, problems. Yeah, I, I would watch it though. G give it a shot. It's on. All right. It's on uh, you know, MTV.com. I'm sure it's on demand now. I think the second episode will be on next Monday. Um, Wait, yeah, it's only having... MTV.com. No, no. I think I, I ended up watching that. If you wanted to oh, watch it online, okay. but it's it's probably on demand, you know, too somewhere. But uh, you know, I, I don't know if it's something we'll cover every week. But I think you know, give it a shot and see what you think. Sounds Although I did good. like, I read an article how like there's one, so there's like six or eight kids who are the main characters, and there's like one black kid who I read like was friends with Alex, and they Alex called them up and said, hey, do you want to come come hang out with us more because we need diversity in the show? <laughs> I'm like, well, that's not real. Then if like they weren't hanging out before the show quite as much, but 
Well, they probably like them and probably pulled people yeah. in. It's not that big of a deal, but yes. Yeah, but, you're but right. it was like if it, it's like if you were friends with somebody that you you know you haven't seen in a while, and you're like, hey, want to come be my new best friend? Because we need someone you know who looks different Diversity, to be on our show. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. All right. Well, uh, we'll be back next week, hopefully, with another episode here, another Game of Thrones episode with Ron. Who, uh, we're getting some good feedback on both those, so I'm looking forward to it. Um, anything else you want to talk about today? No, I think we covered it all. I'm really excited for um, some awesome reality television coming up on Sunday. Yeah, and we have uh, Paradise coming back pretty soon, too. I'm ready for The Bachelor to be over and bring back Bachelor in Paradise. That's that's the show we'll cover. <laughs> Wait, so The Bachelorette's still on? Yeah, they had the men tell all this past week, which, yeah, who cares? So we're going to find out who she picks? Yeah, next week, happens. probably. Yeah, I, I don't. I have yeah. no idea what's going on, so. Yeah, yeah. if it's not Wabam, who cares? So. <laughs> You're still sad about Wabam. Wabam. Yeah. What blow me. <laughs> All right, guys. Remember to go to our website at www.bringmeyourtorch.com. And remember that you may have come here as a stranger, but you're leaving as a friend. We'll see you next time on Bring Me Your Torch. Bye.